Somehow the hum of my Mustang failed to wake up the baby, who was asleep in the car seat strapped to the small seat behind me. I placed his car seat in the passenger seat so I could see him out of the corner of my eye. How he could fall asleep to the symphony of roaring pistons is a mystery to me. I might even wake up from the dead to enjoy it. But perhaps for a two-year-old to be able to fall asleep to the sounds of this symphony is further proof. Beyond the DNA test and everything else that he is definitely my son. Then I saw it. All my senses are heightened like an ancient warrior and my reflexes prepare my body for battle. As my eyes scanned the movement ahead, my ears heard a sound similar to my engine. Then I saw it. A heavily modified Camaro. I noticed a beautiful red paint job that was clearly custom made. The body kit seems a little cheesy to me, but not everyone likes my custom grill and spoiler. The Camaro driver saw me and slowed down. He started the engine and my heart skipped a beat. His death will be epic. His shame and disappointment were just around the corner. Finding vectors and gaps in the flow of transport and traffic, I can already imagine in my imagination how it will end. I couldn't even imagine how 600 horsepower under my hood could destroy his little plastic car that looked like a beetle. The smile on my face widened as I stepped on the gas pedal, but common sense returned. In my head, I remember my son in the back seat. The joy in my heart gradually faded, and my speed actually dropped below the limit. I looked at the tinted windows and shook my head. He didn't even realize how lucky he was. It also slows down when driving in traffic jams. I felt his disappointment at being rejected in a fight that never happened. I feel the same way, but my son's safety comes first. Ten minutes later, I had just finished a fight that never happened and pulled into the driveway of a nice neighborhood. The house is no longer what it was before. The grass is too long and needs to be trimmed. Even the hedges need trimming, and the paint on the walls of the house is peeling. All this is associated with difficulties in family life. Sometimes there aren't enough hours in the week to get everything done. However, the lack of joy at home is inexplicable. Many of the homes in this area radiate joy, love, and security. This is not an option. I turned off the engine and before the car stopped, the front door opened. When I opened the door, the woman ran to the car. The closer she gets, the more beautiful she becomes. Her thick blonde hair fell in waves and curled just below her shoulders. In a thin t-shirt, her breasts were barely visible. Even after he was born, he was so small that I could hug him. I know because I've done it many times. She smiled as she walked towards the car. How are my children, she asked. Although I frowned, I was surprised by her beauty. He's sleeping, I said, trying to keep my voice even. Yes, it's the same thing, she smiled. And you? Even though every fiber of my being wanted to tell him this, I gave in. I opened the passenger door and pulled the entire seat out of the car. My son didn't even move. Well, at least I can tell mom I saw you, he said. When was the last time you saw her? I just looked at her as I walked home with my son in car seat. Jack, you were so sweet yesterday, she said. You've been working like crazy all week. Nobody expects you to cut down a tree on Saturday and then take your child to the zoo all day. You also need to have some fun. Remember, it's all work and no play. I don't answer here either. Honey, I was going to ask my mom to babysit her grandson this weekend. She's dying too, and you know, we can make your wildest dreams come true. We could fly to New Orleans and go to the Anne Rice Vampire Ball, the ball you've always wanted to go to, and you could dress me however you want. You really don't want to do this, I said quietly. You won't like it. Jack, you're right, he said, but I'll do anything for you. You must know. Okay, Jack, I may have an ulterior motive, but JJ is two now and I'm 27. You're getting better at math, I told him. Very interesting, Jack. But you know where I'm going, right? She says. JJ needs a brother or sister and I think it would be nice to have at least one more before he gets too old to run after kids. I calmed down a little when he told me what he was going to do with me when we arrived at the hotel. I see everything happening in my head. I can be the headless horseman in my costume and she can be the sexiest vampire in the world. Maybe we'll win the costume contest. She said I could use them however I wanted. I remember how she cooked and imitated me. Her legs spread almost automatically and she was always ready for me whenever I touched her. Sometimes I'm convinced that the reasons we make mistakes are my fault. Perhaps I left her alone too long. Perhaps she loved him too much or trusted him too much. But for seven years, everything I did was for her. I fell in love with her from the first second I met her. He worked in a restaurant on the campus of the university where he studied. I looked at her and stopped what I was doing. I wanted to be closer to her, so I took a step towards her and fell into a chair that I didn't notice. 
I also fell in front of her, and she tripped and dropped a whole plate of dishes and food. She was not a happy camper. His first step to regaining his balance was to call me every name he could think of. She restored balance by calling me every name she could think of. Embarrassed, I stood up and left the restaurant. Angry, offended, and satisfied, I returned to the house where I lived with three other students. I immediately went back to my room to take a shower. As usual, I immersed myself in my studies. A few hours later, my best friend Eric came into my room. Take your head out of your ass and get lost, he shouted excitedly. Because, I muttered, I have to teach. You've learned too much. Two. He smiled. Why do you continue to study? University, remember? I talk about this at the end of the book. Look, this is why I dropped out of college, he said. I had never heard her voice before, but her voice was as beautiful as she was. I immediately looked up. It's about learning, he says. She just missed me and cried. I sat and listened to her. So you tripped over the chair, he asked. Apparently you study better than go out. I whispered, I only see you. She came up to me and smiled. You're so beautiful that you don't notice anything else, I continued. I didn't see any chairs or walls or floors or other people, but they were there whether I saw them or not. So I ran into one of them. Then she smiled. I'm sorry. You may hear this often, right? She nodded. Yes. Everyone who saw me wanted to take me out to dinner and then take me home to bed, he said. I'm sorry, I said. I need something more. I didn't even suggest it, he laughed. But out of curiosity, what do you mean? I want to give you everything, I said. First of all, my own home, my family, and my heart. If you leave me, I will spend the rest of my life trying to make you happy. Give me the money, he said. I got fired today. Apparently, they don't like a waitress who constantly spills food. I gave him my wallet. There he scored 20 points. Is the burger good, she asked. Hello, I'm surprised. Are hamburgers healthy for dinner? She said it clearly. Of course, I screamed, enjoying the sound of the word time. I'll be back soon, he said. Jacob, I laughed. Aubrey, she replied, smiling back. Shouldn't I go with you, I asked. She just shook her head. Keep learning, Jack, he said. If you want to take care of me for the rest of your life, you have to be smart, so keep learning. Two years later, we were married and living in our first home. Two years later, I started my own company. We produce custom prosthetics and orthotics for clients ranging from world-class athletes to everyday people. We also make protective equipment for athletes who want to train or compete, but have suffered minor injuries. My company is still small and everyone knows each other. However, from a performance standpoint, we looked at several purchase offers. The problem is that whoever wants to buy the company doesn't want to continue their charity work for abused children who can't afford prosthetics. But I loved what I did, and I loved Aubrey, so making a lot of money and getting rich was not my plan. But as they say, ignorance is bliss. His parents love me too. We are one big happy family. His parents asked us when they could visit their grandson, but there were even worse questions. My friend Steve hates his mother-in-law and father-in-law. They offered their daughter money to get a divorce. Steve is a doctor. He's part of my team. He helps by observing everything engineers do when developing prosthetics. He made sure everything was anatomically safe for our patients and also helped resolve any problems related to the installation of the equipment. I was able to hire him because he worked at two of the three hospitals in our area. He's a good candidate. Aubrey and I are very happy. We go on vacation several times a year, and when I'm not working, we are inseparable. She is my world, so I wasn't surprised when she started talking about planning our first child. After a few conversations, we both decided to wait a few more years until we were 30. It would be the best time to be alive. It also gives us more time to travel and enjoy each other. I think our timing could have been better since Aubrey's father passed away a few years later. My mother-in-law was very upset about his death. It took him a while to get over it, and during that time we became closer. I felt a similar spirit in my mother-in-law. Unfortunately, I soon began to think that something was wrong with Aubrey. Jack, will you always love me, she asked me. I told him forever and ever. What if we have a third child and I have a big butt, she asked. Then I smiled even more. But why, she asked. It reminded me of her and what we did. I told you a million times, I'm telling you. Aubrey, we all know you are beautiful and every man who sees you wants you. It was so when we met five years ago, and it will probably always be so. But I love you not only for what you look like, but also for who you are. I love you because you come and pick me up from the computer when you think I'm working too much.
I love the way you run around the house in one of my t-shirts and those big fluffy slippers. I love you because of the way you look when we work in the garden. You are covered in sweat and dirt, your hair is disheveled, and your face is all blotchy. Aubrey, I loved you from the first moment I saw you, and I will love you until the last day of my life. I swear, no matter what happens to us, no matter what you look like or how much weight you gain, I don't want to turn to Whitney Houston, but yes, I finished the last part of my knees in front of her. I know it's sentimental and maybe I'm going against the audience a little. I thought he was going to laugh or hit me or something like that. Our eyes met and tears flowed from her eyes like water from a sprinkler system. The next thing I remember, he ran into the bedroom and closed the door. She sat in her room all day without opening the door. She said she just needed time. She carefully sat down next to me while I sat on the porch and watched the sunset. She placed her hand on mine, which was furthest from her, and took her hand in my other hand. Are you okay? I asked. Jack, I'm a woman, she said. Sometimes we react to things in strange ways. Jack, I think after all this time, I finally realized how much you love me. I love you too, but this isn't one of those stories about two cute high school kids. School, right? No, that's not true, I said. But what is the reason? I just found out that the girl I grew up with is getting divorced. Her husband went to see his personal assistant. They fell in love and got married. They have kids and everything. They were together for so many years and now they have nothing left. The crazy thing is that Dana is ready to forgive him. She was ready to chalk it up to her little madness and random adventures. He wanted to welcome him back into his heart, into his bed, into his whole being. What's even crazier is that he didn't stay with his assistant. He left them both. Guess what? The blonde was six feet tall and had breasts the size of beach balls, and he was just tired of sleeping with her. Beauty isn't everything. I think I realize how lucky I am to not only love a man who loves me for who I am on the inside, but also to marry him. This will never happen to us, I told him, and that meant more to me than my plans for this time in my life. I knew deep down that I needed to spend more time with her. I need to spend more time with us. So the next day I left work early and headed to our happy home with a big bouquet of flowers. My mission is to convince the woman I love that I truly love her and will love her until the end of time. He was in a good mood and was running around the house. My joy began to fade when I no longer found her in my living room, kitchen, or bedroom. I heard screams from the basement and thought maybe he was doing laundry. Then I remembered that we had read about women enjoying the dryers and silently running down the stairs. This is what I really want to see. I cautiously peeked around the corner near the dryer and saw Aubrey with her legs spread and her head thrown back. Unfortunately, there was someone between his legs. They had wild sex. Although I wanted to do something, I felt depressed. She pulled him closer and placed her hands on his back. Then she wrapped her slender legs around his waist. I knew what would happen, but I was going to leave. I'll stay here as long as necessary because I need to see this in action. I have to remember what he did to prevent us from having a chance. I needed the warmth of this vision to burn all the love for her in my heart. The flowers betrayed me. As I walked up the stairs, they fell from my numb fingers and fell to the floor with a crash. Doesn't matter. I heard him sigh and a sudden sound interrupted their conversation and they separated as if someone was still watching them. I don't remember getting into the car and driving away. I can't remember the last time I saw a house we loved so much. I was shocked. No anger, no anger, no feeling of betrayal. At that moment, I felt a strong need to be somewhere else. Perhaps it was the survival instinct of a wounded animal that made me run away from danger and look for a place where I could regain my strength to fight again. Aubrey, he doesn't listen to me at all, but he has to. Perhaps my choice of clothing was a mistake, but there is one more thing I need to understand. I needed to know if I could still excite him. Life can be cruel sometimes. I asked him about his deepest dreams and he had to stop and think about it. I think that says more about me than it does about him. My thoughts continued as he answered, I've always been beautiful. It's more of a curse than a blessing. All my life I've endured being looked at and misunderstood. I was always the center of attention when all I wanted to do was stay away. There was always one or more boys who loved me, but I didn't know why they loved me. I always get nominated for queen for one reason or another, simply because of my looks. In high school, boys fought over me. All I could do was smile and try to be friendly. I'm not very interested in boys. I'm probably late. Part of the problem was that I was just watching life go by. Most of my grades were undeserved. Apparently my charm also works on older men. He had a solid GPA. Most of the male teachers gave me an A without doing any work. 
also one of the teachers. Another teacher gave me a bad grade, or tried to. I did all the extra work I could for his class and still got an A. But I graduated from high school and entered the real world. I tried to go to college, but since I didn't learn anything in high school, I was completely unprepared. After a year of spending my parents' money, I gave up. Once again, I noticed that life was passing me by. At 20, she was still as beautiful as a new morning, but that was nothing. They never kissed me. I've never been spoiled. I worked as a waitress and failed. My boss came to me and told me that I was fired. As he took the check, he had another idea. After 40 minutes, I was no longer a virgin, but I was still working. It was fun, but I didn't feel anything. This got me thinking. For most of my life, I didn't just see it happen. They took me away from it. I don't know what love is. I really don't have any hatred. Over the next few years, I began to use everything I needed to succeed. Not that I provided myself or anything, but if I needed a few dollars for rent, I had it. If I need new shoes or new clothes, I can buy them. I have no long-term ambitions or plans. I often find myself because people ask me a lot. Most people just love me. Some wanted more, but I couldn't give it to them. Even those whom I met more than once quickly realized that there was no connection. And then one day, I experienced the worst day of my life. My boss told me that if I dropped another pallet, I would be fired. Either way, I knew I had reached the end of the road. This has nothing to do with my lack of server skills. My boss is tired of arguing with me. He handed it to the new waitress. He is only 19 years old and has an exotic appearance. She also shared that she was very happy about it. What he lacks in beauty, he makes up for in enthusiasm. While wondering what to do next, I noticed that several men my age came in and sat down. I'm glad they weren't on one of my tables. They look like students and creepy scavengers. But the baby is very cute. It's unusual for me to think about this. I've never really reacted to a man's appearance. I became more sensitive to their desires and what they had to offer me. I felt his gaze on me every time I walked through the room. I'm used to it. But I don't know why. It's just that his eyes warmed me. I walked around the room again with a tray full of food, trying to be as careful as possible. I noticed that he was looking at me with his mouth open, as if I was naked or something. He even stood up when I approached him. Then he tripped and fell in front of me, and since the tray was in my hand I couldn't see him. I stepped on him, tripped, and knocked over the whole tray. I called every name I could think of, angrily collected my things, and prepared to leave. The other of the two boys approached me. For a beautiful woman like you, you have a very bad character, he said. It was an accident. Jacob doesn't want to set you up. For the first time in six months, I convinced him to leave the bedroom, and then he saw your damn waitress and acted like you were a god of punishment or something, of such a type. I felt sorry for what I did to his friend, so I asked him to take me to his friend so I could apologize. From the moment I saw him again, I knew there was something about him. I thought we'd see each other a few more times and it would all be over. But then he told me how he felt, and I melted. Nothing matters anymore. I just want to be with him. It was weird because I had sex, but guys always want that. We were together from that moment. Although this may seem a little strange to me, I have a boyfriend. I have something else. He lived in a house where several other people lived, and I had just moved into his room. Sometimes I would follow him and wait for him to leave the classroom. I still don't think what we experienced was love, but it was the closest thing I've ever felt. I don't think I'll ever know true love, but I understand that Jack loves me, and I love that he loves me. I really like that he wants to take care of me and build a life together. I had no ambitions or plans for my life, so I was smart enough to trust my life to a person who could give me a better life than I could live alone. I was happy when he graduated with high grades and found a good job. He seemed to keep all his promises. When he proposed to me, I was shocked. Yes, I said it. I couldn't get the words out fast enough, not that I really liked it. I still don't know what love is, but we have a connection. It also means I don't have to worry about work or anything else. I can live a good life without working. Besides, if I stay here long enough, even if I get divorced, everything will be fine, even if it doesn't last long. Over the years, we became more and more a couple. I saw people around us getting married and having children, and I noticed that many of them were jealous of us. It seems to me that from the outside, it seems that we have an ideal marriage. Jack would literally do anything for me. Sometimes I feel ashamed because I know I don't and will never feel the same about him. I simply do not have the opportunity to experience these feelings. I cook for him. 
I cleaned our house and made it a wonderful place to live. I will sleep with him whenever I want. I like it. We kissed all the time, and I tried to be attractive to him. Jack was by my mother's side when my father died. I think that was the turning point because that's when I realized I didn't feel anything about my father's death. It made me realize that there was something wrong with me emotionally. Over the years, Jack and I discussed the possibility of having children many times, but ultimately decided to put the idea on hold. Then I started thinking seriously about it, but soon I talked about it with a friend I grew up with. She was on the verge of divorce and was desperate. Her husband was visiting a young woman, and she really wanted him to return. I realized that my husband is probably the same as me. She cheated on my boyfriend for years and finally got tired of pretending. He decided that he just wanted to be alone and free. This bothers me, but I don't understand why. This man is an idiot. Does this mean I am like that too? Since we started dating, I have had sex with other men from time to time. At this time, he had sex with his friend. This doesn't mean Jack is bad in bed, not because I have feelings for someone else. He's just someone I can turn to from time to time. At first it was because he didn't want to hurt Jack. Six months ago I was at home when the lawn appeared. I saw a large man walking around our yard mowing and spraying. I love you. I know Jack will never find out so it won't hurt him. That's why I do this. I walked to the door and told him to come in. This was the first time I brought someone to our house for sex and it taught me two things. First of all, this guy, skinny, muscular, long hair and all, doesn't give me as much pleasure as Jack does. Jack is so attractive that many of the women I know want him, but I don't think I've noticed him in a while. But that day a chink appeared in my armor. Besides the fact that this boy doesn't bring me any joy, I feel bad. It was my first time, so I decided it was best to leave. Maybe even if I don't like him, I should respect him enough not to do it. Unfortunately, things didn't turn out that way. A man named Steve, who worked for Jack and was his friend, came to me and said that he had evidence that I deceived Jack. To keep him from telling Jack, I had to give him the same thing I gave to that gardener. I did this and didn't feel anything. I'm actually okay with it because I'm not doing this just to have sex, but to help our marriage. Part of the reason this works is because the man has cheated on his wife in the past. He was caught several times. It also gave me an outlet. So when Jack isn't around, I can ask someone for help instead of risking getting caught by mistake. But after a conversation with a friend, everything changed. She's not like me. She loved this idiot very much, and now she and her children face a lonely and unhappy life. I wonder if this could happen to me. When Jack returned home later, I asked him if he really loved me. His answer surprised me. Finally, I ran past him up the stairs to our room. I have to stay away from him. I couldn't look him in the eye. I just don't deserve to be treated like that by him. I later found out that he loved me more than I thought. I don't deserve this kind of love. Perhaps it was guilt, but I decided that the best thing I could do for him was to leave him. I should have left, but then I thought how much it would hurt him. I started crying. I thought for a long time about what my life would be like without him. I realized that even one day without this person, I would most likely die. Then I realized that I kissed Jack because I liked kissing him, and when we made love it was because I wanted it. She didn't just want sex, she wanted Jack. It took me a while to realize this but I love my husband. That night, Jack and I made love. Don't make mistakes. We do this all the time, but it seems like I've been avoiding this night for years. I gave him everything I had that night. This is completely different. I felt like everything I did with other men was a waste of time. I've been an idiot most of my life. That night, we fell asleep hugging each other. The next morning, when he kissed me goodbye, I became a different woman. I can't stop smiling. I repeated this phrase over and over again. I love my husband. I called his friend and told him we weren't going to be together anymore. Last time you spoke to me, I wanted him to stop, so I told him to come in the afternoon when Jack was at work. He supported me. When it arrived, we went straight to the laundry room in the basement. I never slept with him anywhere else, even before I realized my feelings for Jack. I respected him enough to not let anyone in our bed. He rushed at me as soon as he came, but there was no love there. Although this had never happened before, it was just sex. That night before Jack and I went to bed, we kissed and I wanted him to tell me what he thought of each other. It was amazing and I planned to do it again that night. It's just sex. We have this kind of sex only for physical satisfaction. It's weird, but I don't usually like it. But that day I was still in a good mood thinking about what happened the day before. And my new relationship made me more horny than before. So my body reacted. But before I finished, I heard something. 
I pushed him away, but he apparently heard me too. We looked down the corridor and saw nothing. He shrugged and extended his hand again. We're done, I said. What happened made me feel worse and worse. We will never talk about this again and it will never happen again. If you call me again, I will tell him that you will suffer the same loss as me, if not more. He nodded and began to get dressed. You can go, I told him. I turned around and went to take a shower. I needed to prepare to make this night even more special for Jack and I. When I approached the stairs, my heart almost stopped. My whole life flashed before my eyes and I realized how empty my life was before meeting Jack. My desperate cries brought my friend back. What's happened? I asked him. I pointed to the flowers scattered along the steps. Oh, damn, he said, shaking his head. I do not know what to do. I took a shower and changed clothes to cook dinner. My only hope is that this time Jack, my girlfriend, and Steve's wife will get angry, insult me, and then forgive me. I need another chance, but this will never happen again. I know I really like it. I just want Jack to have the chance to be the happiest man in the world. I told myself that Jack loved me and promised me forever. As soon as it gets dark, I start to worry. Jack always called me when he was going to be late. I called his number and found out that he had a problem. I'm not getting contact. There wasn't even a call. Every time she doubted Jack's feelings, they disappeared. My husband stopped me. I had to wait until he got home before talking about our problems. I sat on the sofa and waited for him. I thought he might have gone out for a drink with friends before returning home. My only defense against anger was knowing how much I thought Jack loved me. Apparently, I fell asleep at night. I woke up in the dark at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got up thinking Jack was angry, walked past me and went to bed. When I realized our room was empty, I checked both rooms and cried. This was the first time in my adult life that I cried about something. I felt like my heart had been ripped out of my chest. If this is love, I can live without it. The next morning I felt worse. I tried calling Jack again but nothing changed. I called his office and received a message after hours. I asked his secretary to call me as soon as he arrived. I sat on the couch and waited by the phone. Brenda called me around 9.10. His voice was as cheerful and friendly as always. What's wrong with the boss? She asked. Brenda, you have to help me, I said. Jack and I have a question. I really need to talk to him. Can you ask him to call me when he arrives? Oh my God, he said. You look terrible. Of course, I will definitely call you. I'll do better. As soon as he arrived, I gave him the phone and asked to speak. I was his secretary before you got married. Yes, they had been together before, but I remember that this was the first time they had a fight. Everything will be okay, Aubrey. He really loves you. An hour later, the phone rang. I picked up the phone and started talking. Jack, I love you more than anything in the world. I do what you want. Go home, I said. Aubrey, this is Brenda, he said. Jack just called. He said he took time off because he wasn't feeling well. I told him to call you. I thanked him and hung up. I do not know what to do next. Step on. When I left the house, I couldn't walk fast enough. I took my phone out from my belt and placed it on the seat next to me. I want Jack to call me anytime. Oh, I screamed. I have no one to blame but myself, and Jack is more than just my boss. He's more than a friend. When I graduated from medical school, I was not valedictorian of my class. Although there are three hospitals in the area, I had difficulty finding one. I have a huge student loan, a wife, and two small children. I don't just want a job. I need a job. I need more work than air. I finally found a job as a hospitalist at a regional hospital. After two years and some troubles, I was released. I was lucky that I wasn't sued for medical malpractice. Then I was hired at Tremont Hospital. I didn't stay there long. The third hospital in the area didn't even interview me. But luckily I met Jack. He hired several doctors and several medical students from Tremont. As his business grew, he had to hire a full-time doctor. That's when they fired me. It's good for both of us. Everything has been going well for three years now. I made more money working for Jack, worked fewer hours, and experienced much less stress. I admit, I cheated on my wife Carly a few times and got caught a few times, but I loved her and my kids. I was just under a lot of pressure. The last time he caught me, I swore I'd never do it again, and I meant it. I think if it weren't for my bad luck, I wouldn't be in this situation. Aubrey is hot, there's no doubt about it, but I would never have made a move towards her if I hadn't had the opportunity to have fun with her. I found out that this bitch was cheating on Jack and I took advantage of it. I probably should be angry, but I really think I'm helping him in my own way. If she cheated on him in any way, sooner or later the bitch would be caught and he would be hurt. 
At the very least, I would do my best to avoid getting hit and not hurt him. Besides, he would never try to take Aubrey away from him. There is no love in what we do. There's something else going on here. It took me a while to figure this out. At first, I thought that Aubrey was a beautiful woman that every man desires. At first, I was a little jealous of Jack. But after spending time with Aubrey, I noticed something. Aubrey looks like a Barbie doll. She is the perfect example of femininity. She was absolutely stunning and sexy. But that was only on the surface. She didn't feel anything. Making love to him was like making love to a living, breathing, inflatable doll. The only time I felt warmth from her was when she talked about Jack. We didn't talk about him often because he was so ashamed of what I did to him. I went back to work that day expecting them to call me at the office or come see me at any moment. I tried to avoid him wherever he was. To my surprise, he never showed up. This is unusual because Jack and I usually talk several times a day. I do not feel good. Time goes by slowly. When it was time to return home, I took off like a rocket. I continued to hug Carly and my kids as soon as I walked in the door. The next morning, I went to work and never saw Jack. It was strange because Jack usually arrived at work first. When I have a problem that I can't solve without him, I go to him. Later, I found out that he was on vacation. Then I laughed. At first, she was convinced that Jake and Aubrey were having a hard time staying married. Hopefully, Aubrey will be there to help me if I need it, and I probably won't get fired. She called me around 11 o'clock. I want to know why you called me. I didn't answer the call. A few minutes later, he called again and I answered. I thought we'd never talk again, I said dryly. He was not prepared for the intensity of his feelings. Hearing the pain in his voice made me feel even worse. He was, she exclaimed. He went on to say that he talked to everyone he could call. He even called the police. She just wanted me to go out and look for him. She wanted me to see all the places we visited. I'm not sure that's a good idea, Aubrey, I said. You are a coward, he barked. Do you have the courage to sleep with your wife behind your back, but don't have the courage to look her in the eye? Your words hurt me deeply. I already feel bad enough. You just have to find it, he said. Call me and tell me where it is. I decided I could do it. I looked for it everywhere, but couldn't find it anywhere. I feel worse. My friend, the only one who believed in me and gave me a chance when no one else needed me, is now somewhere alone. He was clearly hurt and heartbroken and I shared responsibility. Aubrey. The police didn't help at first. The search began just 48 hours after he disappeared. I called them at least 10 times before they finally agreed to send a detective. When detectives finally arrived, things went from bad to worse. One of the investigators was a woman and she immediately hated me. They started asking questions and I had to tell them why Jack left. The investigation quickly changed after that. I had to give them Steven's contact information. They also started interrogating him. I really think they thought Stephen and I killed Jack or something, but they told me to get a lawyer. I'll never forget the way the detective looked at me when I left the house. She looked at me as if I were the lowest creature on earth. I don't mind. I just want my husband back. She called me two days later. I was wrong about you, he said. Looks like you didn't kill him. You tore out his heart and let him die, but you didn't kill him. Did you find it? I screamed with joy. We found it, he said. This way you will no longer be a suspect, just like your friends who also cheated on you. Then he hung up. I had to call him back. You forgot to tell me where I was before you hung up, I said. I haven't forgotten, he said in the most sarcastic tone I've ever heard. He's an adult. He's in a good mood and doesn't want us to tell him what he's thinking, considering what you did to him. By law, I cannot go against his will. Have a good day. You should still hire a lawyer. I knew there was a way to contact him. I felt better when I realized that he was fine and that he was just mad at me. Just knowing he's okay makes me happy. I still want to see it, but it's progress. I called my mom. Jack loves her. If she called, he would answer. I had to try to remain calm while talking to him. I got into a lot of trouble with the police, and when I admitted that the fight was my fault, they wanted to know what I had done. I just asked him to call him. About two hours later, I called her. My mom is older, so I'm sure she talked to him, but forgot to call me back. She didn't. After talking with her, she refused to call me. Mom, I know this sounds bad, but Jack doesn't understand something, I said. I know what I did was terrible, but Jack doesn't really understand what he's telling you. Jake didn't tell me what you did, she said. But I know because you snuck around and tried to get to him, and it was your fault, Aubrey. You're my girlfriend. I love you. I loved you from my first breath.
I'll be there for you most of the time, but I won't kick any puppies for you. Mom, I didn't mean to kick him. I love him and I want him back, I said. Aubrey, you didn't hear the pain in that man's voice, he said. You have hurt him deeply. A lot of people love this man, but I'm not sure he'll ever be the same again. Whatever you do, I hope it's worth it. Jack, I didn't do anything the first week. I sat in the hotel and endured the pain. Almost as soon as I left the house, I blocked Aubrey's number and my home number on my iPhone. I can still call them, but incoming calls don't even go through. I called Brenda and told her I was going on vacation. The first few days I ate, slept, and thought. I have experienced every aspect of life. I realized that Aubrey didn't love me. I realized this not through wisdom or knowledge, but through mathematical proof. I know I love Aubrey. I love him deeply and completely. I will never be able to touch another woman. Aubrey has no such restrictions. That's why she can't love me. When I realized this, I had to decide what to do. On the third day, a policeman came to see me. She was a tall, beautiful woman who looked at me with worried eyes. After the conversation, I asked her not to tell Aubrey about my whereabouts, and she said that I had nothing to worry about. The next day, I spoke with Aubrey's mother. Talking to him definitely made me feel better. A conversation with my mother-in-law made me realize that this is not so. I didn't do anything wrong. My only mistake was falling in love and trusting the wrong woman. I also mistook my friends for bad friends. He has not yet turned 30 years old. I still have a long way to go in life, so I'll have to give up. The next morning, I did something I haven't done for a long time. I ran. The first day was not easy for me because I felt a little bad. When I got to the hotel, I had a hearty breakfast and started talking on the phone. I called Brenda first and then my lawyer. I told Brenda I would be back at work, but not during the day. I'll be back this afternoon to finalize the contract and pass on the information to everyone. I asked them to quietly find a replacement for Stephen, but not to say a word about it. Are you already at home? She asked. Aubrey is there. Brenda, do as I tell you, I said. My regular business lawyer gave me the contact information for someone who he thought was the best family law expert in the state. I met him the next day. I told him the details of the case, and fortunately I did not need any evidence. Both Aubrey and Stephen were questioned by the police and admitted to the fraud. This then becomes part of the public register. I didn't do anything with our bank account. I did not withdraw or hide the money. I don't want Aubrey to lose his livelihood. I don't want to hurt him. I still loved her too much to do that. But I needed to get her out of my head and out of my life. The next thing I knew I needed to change, I have money. I decided to use some of them. I hired a real estate agent to find a new home. I've heard that in a divorce, the wife usually keeps the house. My lawyer told me I could live with him because it wasn't my fault and we didn't have children, but I didn't want him. I'm not sure I can go back to the house. There are other things that need to change. I remember leaving the hotel one day to meet my real estate agent and look at my car. Aubrey and I have similar BMWs. As expected, our cars were a pair, but if we're not a couple anymore, why don't I have a car anymore? At the end of the day, he was driving a black Mustang GT. I took the car to a body shop and changed the exterior. Factory wheels require replacement. I chose 20 inches black Hilo wheels. I really like how the black wheels make the car look more sinister. I also tinted the squares after two days. I then replaced the factory grill with a black grill and splitter. Then I dimmed the lights on each side of the car. I then replaced the factory brakes with larger black vented rotors and bright yellow calipers. Then I started upgrading the engine. Since I left most of my clothes at home, I had to buy new clothes. I also cut my hair. I feel like a new person. My lawyer told me that he had the documents ready and we could give them to him when I was ready. I decided to wait another day or two. The next day, I returned to work. I called Brenda and told her I would be back and that she could schedule an interview to replace Stephen. When I walked into the office, Brenda was screaming. She ran up to me and hugged me. Instead of telling him what was going on, I made it clear that Aubrey and I had broken up. He seemed to be in as bad a mood as I was. I walked down the hallway and saw several new faces in Stephen's lab. I just smiled and went back to the office to read the morning paper. About 10 o'clock, he entered the reception area and looked for Brenda. What exactly is happening? I asked him. Why are these people in my laboratory? She just showed me the door. Stefan enters. When he saw me, his expression changed. Jack, I'm so sorry, he said. No, Stephen, I said. You're fired. Jack, can I explain? I asked him. He came to me as he had done hundreds of times. I don't know where it came from, but I suddenly felt anger that I had never felt in my entire life. I hit him twice, once in the stomach and once in the face. 
Its shape resembles a harmonica. Pack everything and leave my building in an hour. I spat as he stood up and wiped the blood from his face. Jack, I just want to talk, she said, slamming the office door in his face. I sat down at the table and dialed the phone number. I'm ready, I said. We can do this. Aubrey, I haven't seen Jack in almost a month. I can't eat. I cannot sleep. All I could do was stand there and wait for him to stop being angry with me. He wasn't even in our bed. I'm lying on the couch. I was too afraid that he would try to sneak into the house to get clothes or anything else he needed, and I would miss the chance to see him. Every time I heard someone approaching the door, I would jump up and run towards them. But I was disappointed when I found out that it wasn't them. Every time the phone rings, I rush to it in the hope that it will finally decide to call me. I wish with all my heart that everything will return to normal. I've never felt so good about being distant and distant as I sit here, alternately crying and trying to come up with a plan to get him back. Suddenly the phone rang. While waiting for another telemarketer, I looked at the call screen. This is Jack's office number. I answered so quickly that I was surprised. Jack, I'm sorry, I said hastily. Please pee. Aubrey, this is Brenda, he interrupted. I just wanted to let you know that he's back at work today and honey, he's changed. He is more withdrawn than before and also more emotional. Jack stopped laughing. At first I thought it was just a different hairstyle or outfit, but it has definitely changed. He punched Steve in the mouth and kicked him out. Security kicked him out of the building, and he returned to work as if nothing had happened. I called you because I wanted you to come and calm him down. I have to go. Just called me. I stood up, suddenly full of energy. This is a good sign. Even when he gets angry, Jack doesn't stay long. He was the most angry at me when I ran to the mall and saw the blonde moment. I got into his new car on our road. This is a real disaster for the insurance industry. We had to pay a deductible on both vehicles, and the insurance company refused to pay for repairs. Jack got very angry with me and didn't talk to me for about an hour. A sad look is enough. I'm very sad, baby. I'm very happy. I realized that I hadn't showered or taken care of myself since Jack left. I was so depressed that I didn't even care about my appearance. I took a quick shower because I didn't know when I'd be home. Washing my hair took a while. I had to dry them and then try to style them. I wore clothes that Jack hated seeing me in public. It is not very cut and covers me a lot. The skirt is about three inches below my knees, but is cut to fit my body and really accentuate my bust and hips. I just want to use it because I want him to remember what he lost by being mad at me. Before I could choose a pair of shoes, I heard the car door close and was shocked. The preparation took longer than I thought. Jack is at home. I ran down the stairs and almost tripped. I'm rocking and moving all the time. I didn't want him to find me in this state, so I had to go to the hospital. I went to the door, opened it, and saw a woman, almost my double, and rang the doorbell. As he looked at me, his hand stopped short of touching the button. We all judge ourselves before we speak. She is the same height as me. His hair is probably lighter than mine. She has very blonde hair, and I have blonde hair. It seems my hair has grown several centimeters. My breasts are bigger. But not by much, but my legs definitely look better. She shook her head as if the comparison bothered her too. The entire scene lasts only a few seconds but seems much longer. With a briefcase in one hand, he walked over and took out a folder. He's definitely younger than me. I gave her 21 or 22 years old, so I'm at least four or five years older than her. After looking through the papers, he looked at me, and I noticed that he was chewing gum. Are you Aubrey Adama? He asked very defiantly. He even clicked his gums a couple of times, waiting for my brain to activate so he could react. Then I realized who she was. After Jack promised to love me forever, it only took him a month to replace me with a young woman who was almost my clone. He was trying to show me that I was as replaceable as anything he left at home. I wanted to cry, but I didn't want to shed a single tear in front of this bitch. Yes, it's true, I said almost defiantly. You could say it. You see, he said quickly, interrupting me. Then he turned and left. Wait, I said, you must deliver a message to Jack. Who is Jack? He asked, chewing his gum impatiently. My husband, your new lover. He sent you here to show me this, I began. Look, Grandma, my only lover is Brandon, and I'm only doing this to make money to buy a house when I get back from the army. I don't know anyone, Jack. I'm the sheriff. Our company is paid by the attorney or court to provide you with these documents. I don't even know what's in it. This may include an evacuation notice or a fine. Heck, it could be a sign that your driver's license has been suspended due to multiple DUI convictions. Have a good day. When I saw her leave, I felt relieved. I know what is written in the newspaper. 
A few months ago, I was approached by a guy who had accidentally parked his car in a supermarket parking lot. I knew I probably should have left a note, but I didn't want Jack to get mad right away because our insurance had gone up again, so I left. Cameras are everywhere now. They must have taken my photo there. You may have to go to court to compensate someone for damage to your car. I breathed a sigh of relief. Hey, Aubrey, my neighbor Fred Mertz called. I waved my hand, said nothing, opened the folder and looked at the files. When I saw on the cover that Jack was filing for divorce, everything went dark and my legs gave way. Everything seemed to happen in slow motion. The concrete surface of our porch simply rises and welcomes me. My brain is still working. In fact, it seemed to move faster than light, but was completely separate from my body. It seemed like my brain was so busy understanding it that nothing else mattered. I heard Fred rudely yelling at someone, probably his wife Ethel, to call an ambulance. After a few seconds, he gently patted my face and asked if I was okay. I vaguely remember him saying something like this. Only a fool would put a gift in his mouth. Then he started touching my breasts. I wanted to say something or push him away, but my mouth didn't work and my hands didn't rise. Honestly, I do not care. My world collapsed, or rather, I destroyed it. Then the controversy began. Ethel ran out to see what was happening and found Fred touching my breasts. What are you doing? She shouted to him. I'm doing artificial respiration, he shouted. Absurd. You touch it. Your hands are not on her breasts. You touched his chest, Ethel said. According to him, Ethel's breasts were so large that they covered her entire chest. Mine is bigger than hers, Ethel snorted. Not much, Fred said. The rest of your body is four times larger. It's a matter of proportion. Once Jack finishes teaching you, you will have enough time to understand the size of the prison. You know how he feels about this. This will tear you apart, you old pervert, he smiled. Fred quickly took his hand off my chest, but it was just resuscitation, he said plaintively. This is absurd, Ethel snorted. You will not perform CPR on a breathing person. Hey, it worked, Fred said. I saved his life. You didn't do anything, Ethel screamed. These balls have been going up and down since I've been here. As soon as Jack gets back from his trip, I'll tell him what you did. Oh, please, Ethel, he begged. If you had told him, the arriving doctors would have pushed him away. My next conscious thought was my mother's conversation with me in the hospital. He leaned towards me and tried to speak, but I still couldn't speak. The nurse came over and talked to him. The nurse said she was in shock because she had received very bad news. Your vital signs are good. We are currently analyzing his blood and running a number of tests to determine if there are any health problems. Then my mother turned to her and gave me hope. I called her husband. It will arrive in a few minutes. When mom said Jack was coming, they seemed to notice my heart rate had increased. A few minutes later, I heard his voice. He came into the room with my mother and I heard them talking about me. My mother said she was shocked when she heard the news. It's my fault, Jack said. This may be the reason why you need to obtain a divorce certificate. Jack, what are you talking about? I, I asked my mother. There is no need to get divorced. What does it mean? You'll have to ask Aubrey about that, he said. It's not my role to tell you. Whatever it was, you were in so much pain that I could tell you were going to cry, my mother said. Someone should have told me something. I'll give you half, he said. She got a house. I'll take care of business. We share everything else equally. My lawyer said he could have gotten a better deal, but he didn't want to hurt them. I want her to be happy. I don't want to hurt myself anymore. His voice trembled, and I began to understand what he had done. I tried to get up, but my arms and legs were still like jelly. My mouth doesn't listen to me either. Jack, you two can't be separated, my mother said. This does not work. It's like one of those cheesy Lifetime movies. You will be better together. We never talked about it, but I was worried about Aubrey until you showed up. She never seemed to be attached to anything. He has no interests, few friends, and no ambitions. She was empty, like a beautiful doll. I thought maybe she was a model or something, but then I read all these articles about the modeling world and realized she didn't belong here. She has such big tits and ass, but when she meets you, everything starts to change. She pushed him towards a chair and made him sit down. And you, Jack. His father and I were surprised when he brought you home. I mean, my daughter dated a lot of guys before you, but we know she didn't like any of them. And you were the first one to bring her home and introduce her to her dad and me. To be honest, we didn't expect you to stay here. It's not that we don't like you. It's just that, Jack, you're not his type. You are the best person on the planet, dear. But typical Aubrey types are more determined. Perhaps I should say this more forcefully, 
but you have all achieved success. Next thing I know, you started your own business and my little Aubrey obviously loves you and is ready to create a wonderful home for you and my grandchildren. Whenever you decide to have them, any time will be good. You like yourself. Jack, look at you. You were so excited and Aubrey was in the hospital. We would all feel bad if they weren't together. Well done, mom, I thought, prepare this for me. I always wanted my husband back, but his words did not escape me. She is right. Simplify our lives with a few simple suggestions. Perhaps it was the fact that he seemed to respond to her words that made me feel better. Mom always found a way to get to Jack. This may have been because he lost his parents at a very young age, but my mother seemed to be his mother too. Then the nurse came. She spoke in that fake, happy, pseudo-professional tone that nurses like to use. You are the husband, right? She asked. I think so, Jack replied, at least until now. My mom told him to shut up. The nurse said, I thought so. Then I realized that this loser was trying to flirt with my husband. I looked at him out of the corner of my eye and was even more surprised. He cut his hair and it looked good, but something was wrong. Only those who love it will notice. His smile disappeared. Sometimes the smile you see when you wake up in the morning disappears. My husband, happy and wide-eyed, suddenly seemed more mature, cynical, and distrustful. I promised to return it to its previous state. There's good news and bad news, the nurse said. She was severely dehydrated and malnourished. What's the good news? asked my mother. I think that's great news, Jack joked. My mother pushed him. The nurse said she was pregnant. The news this morning was so shocking that she was devastated by what was happening to her body. She'll be fine. She just needs some love. The nurse looked straight at Jack as she spoke. I think I could hire someone to take care of her, Jack said. You know, this is not what she needs, Mom said. It's time for you to go home. Jack, your absence is making her feel bad. Don't you want to give birth to a healthy baby? He might not even be my son, he said. Anger filled me and gave me strength. You're crazy, I shouted. Of course he is your son. Who else could have gotten me pregnant? I love you. It's stupid. I've made mistakes. But you deserve to know how I feel about you. Jacob, when can you go? He asked the nurse. The nurse said he would have to stay here for a few hours for observation, make an appointment, and make a decision. But you can probably leave here this afternoon. Mom, can you stay with her and take her home? I asked him. I have several things to do. Mom tilted her head and looked at him. I need to check and pack my things. Then I'll have to meet with my lawyer, he said. But I need to be home for three or four hours. See you at home, honey, I said. I can't stop smiling. I am pregnant. It really wasn't planned. I took these pills, but they were clearly not entirely reliable. I tried to get up and found that my legs were still weak. Where were you in such a hurry? The nurse asked. I need to get ready for Jack to come home, I said with a smile. I waited for him for more than four hours. Four years have passed. I had to go to the doctor and make an appointment with other doctors. I need food to recover. It seemed like they just wanted to separate us. Mom didn't help me at all. He loves you, Aubrey, he said. Even if you cheated on him, you can see it in the context of a divorce. Who told you this, I asked. I'm old, she said, but I'm not stupid. Jack loved you more than life itself, and suddenly he left you. It was so fast that he didn't even have to pack his bags. He found out you were pregnant and didn't even know if the baby was his. Not far from the rocket scientist. You should understand this, but deep down I wish you were a rocket scientist or a witch because I'm pretty sure the kid would have abandoned Aubrey without it. I was a little scared because I realized that my plan, B, just the idea of divorce, was wrong. Jack no longer works for me. I can't believe it, but I love this man so much. I just don't want to live without it. When my mother was driving me home, my phone rang. Aubrey, do you and Jack want to get a divorce? Stephen asked with panic in his voice. I'm not sure, I said. If I could have done anything to prevent this, I would have done it. I wasn't so lucky, he said. Jack follows me. He will destroy me. I'm very happy. I was at home and the summons was served. I told Carly it was a medical malpractice lawsuit from the old hospital. I told him it was none of my business, but I followed the advice. She believes him. But if Jack doesn't drop the lawsuit, she'll find out and my marriage will be ruined. This may also affect my presentation to the medical ethics committee. I may lose my driver's license. Aubrey, when Jack hired me, there were several. I've been fired twice for inappropriate incidents at work. The third situation is the situation with a colleague's wife. If the case had gone to trial and become public knowledge, my career would have been over. You must do something to help me. If you don't help me, I'll blame you for saving me. I hate threats, but my life was under threat. 
I hung up. Before leaving, my mother made me soup and watched me eat it. How many times have you cheated on him? He suddenly asked me. I looked at her in surprise. I just started alone. Aubrey, you're a monster, he said, shaking his head. You definitely need to turn up the volume on your phone. I heard everything that man said to you when he took you home. He said this isn't the first time you've cheated on Jack. He looks like an idiot and I really hope he's not my granddaughter's father. This guy is married, right? Does he have children? Two, I said. So if it had been his son, everyone would have suffered except Jack. If it had been Jack's son, everyone but Jack would have been forgiven. What do you mean? I asked. If Jack was a father, he wouldn't abandon his children. He will stay with you only so that his children grow up healthy. If Jack wasn't the father, he would have gotten away with it. You can move on with your life and find someone less toxic. But my grandson will grow up with a bad father and a bad mother. Mom, I think it's time for you to go, I screamed. I don't want to hurt Jack, I like it. Aubrey, do you know what love is? He asked before leaving. After she left, I thought a lot about what she said. I sat on the couch and happily waited for Jack. I got tired of waiting, so I went out and sat on the stairs to wait. I looked at my watch. The time was 15.30. I'm nervous. He said he would be home at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Fred Mertz came over and said hello. He asks, are you okay? Yes, but my chest hurts, I said. He looked like he was choking on something. So why are you sitting here? I asked him. Jack will be home soon, I said. He turned pale and ran home. About 10 minutes later, a car drove into our yard. This is a scary car. Almost all parts of the car are black. The driver turned off the engine and Jack got out of the car. He looked at me. I smiled at him, but he didn't smile back. He approached me slowly, as if he were the main character going to the guillotine. Welcome home, baby, I said. I, Aubrey, will leave him alone, he said. He walked past me and entered the house. He approached our room, I followed him. When I entered the room, he was sitting on the bed. He looked at me as I entered the room. I started to unbutton my shirt and he looked at me strangely. What are you doing? I asked him. I thought you could, I muttered. I'm sitting here trying to decide what to do with my clothes, he said. What do you mean? I asked. I have so many clothes and things here that it would take me forever to move them all to another room, she said. So I thought that since you were at home most of the time and were the one who ruined everything for us, it would be fair if you moved to another room. But then I realized that since you're pregnant, it would make more sense for me to move. I'm just scared, he said. Maybe it's not fear, I said. Perhaps it's common sense. Jack, we're getting married. We should sleep together. We should be together. We just need to sort it out among ourselves. I know it will take time, but if we try to forget the past, everything will be fine. I swear I love you and will never betray you again. Can you really look me in the eye and tell me you don't love me? Aubrey, it's like a Joan Jett song, he said. I hate myself for falling in love with you. We have to acknowledge what happened, he continued. We must be honest with each other. Yes, I always love you with all my heart, but at the same time you hurt me more than anyone else and I don't want to be around you. My plan is to get a divorce and move my business to another state or sell it and start over somewhere else. My mouth dropped open in shock. I didn't expect him to think so much about the whole situation. I've never met a man in my life who didn't actually want me, and luckily he's the only man I really want to be with. Come on, Aubrey, we are young, we haven't turned 30 yet. According to him, nothing has been written yet. It's not too late for the two of us to start over. I can find a woman who really wants to be with me. I could start a new life and have my own children, she told me. His expression was decidedly serious. He didn't joke or joke. We could do whatever we wanted. You will find the man who suits you best. You know, like your mom said, a more determined and confident person. I immediately crossed the room and hit him. Your mother doesn't know anything, I told him. Your conversation with her was so short that it seemed like a sieve. I stopped because I really needed to calm down and catch my breath. Jack, he said, I tend to associate with more determined people. First of all, these were the people who loved me, that's all. When they get what they want, it will be over. That's why he tells you in his own words, I never bought a house from these people or any of them. You were the first and only man I brought home and introduced to my parents. You're also the only person I've ever lived with. Jack, I swear to God, you are the only person I have ever loved, including my parents. You are the only person I have a connection with. I do not know why. I may be sorry, but it's true. I noticed that his anger had subsided a little. The next thing you don't realize is your baby. 
Jack, there's a baby growing inside of me and I swear it's yours. You are the only one from whom I have no protection. It's right. I know you don't want to stay here. You hate me or you love me, but you don't want to be with me anymore. I understand. I hate what I did to us. Jack, you are the best thing that ever happened to me and this is your baby. Can we agree? After the baby is born, we will conduct a DNA test. If the child is yours, we will do our best to make sure everything is okay. If it's not yours, I'll sign your divorce papers immediately, or better yet, I'll walk out of your life and you'll never see me again. But until then, can we try to come to an agreement for the sake of the child? He nodded, as if the anger in his heart had almost disappeared. I'm tired, I said. Can we take a nap? When I left, his anger flared again. I accept your terms, he said dryly. I'm staying here. I will buy everything your child needs. I will accompany you to your doctor's appointment and will do my best to make sure everything goes well. I will be kind and even sweet to you because children, even unborn ones, feel the same, but nothing more. We wouldn't do anything else together. He meant every word he said. Everything I needed he made or bought for me. This is good. He is very attentive. He's wonderful, but he's not my husband without love. Sometimes I felt that he wanted to tell me something. But then the moment passed and I felt cold again. Sometimes he would come home from work and tell me how his day went. He hugged me, squeezed me tightly, and then a blank expression appeared on his face. Sorry, I forgot. We don't do that anymore, he said. It hurts, but I deserve it. I did this to him. As my belly grew, so did my body, becoming bloated and fat, and for a while I lost weight. It is as if a fast runner gets injured and can no longer run fast. He always wondered if his recovery would be that fast. All my life I wanted to be beautiful and sexy. Some women never regain their shape after pregnancy. I started to feel bad. Jack ruined everything. She put cocoa butter on my belly to prevent me from getting stretch marks after the baby was born. It's okay, now you definitely won't have to worry about me cheating on you. I was bloated and fat and no one wanted me, he just laughed. Aubrey, you look sexier now, he said. I relaxed and let his fingers massage my stomach. Fantastic. His hands moved lower and lower, continuing the massage. When I was pregnant, I was always excited, but he drove me crazy. His fingers and his words were like a double attack. Sometimes I feel like there's nothing I can do about it. He was silent. Exactly what? I asked. Jack, tell me. That's when I realized how close we were, just inches apart. My hands are no longer with me. She lay down on his lap and slowly stood up. I grabbed his free hand and placed it on my chest. Then suddenly he sat up and walked away from me. I'm very sorry, he said suddenly. Even if that bastard did it to me, I wouldn't do it to him. Jack, what are you talking about? I smelled it, Aubrey. When the baby is born, Steve's divorce should be over, and you three can be together like I am. Jack, shut up, I said. I won't be with Steve. It's okay, he said, no matter what I say. Jack, I crashed. We both know it, but I love you and only you. I'll be completely honest with you here. I would probably be a terrible mother. You need to be there when this baby is born. If this is your son, I am 100% sure. I know you, Jack. You will want to be a part of your son's life. Jack, I wish you were here. I don't belong to Steve or anyone else but you. I belong to you. Jack, I have always been yours and always will be. So whatever you want to do to me, I want you to do it. I miss you. Jack, I miss you next to me when I sleep. What I miss most is waking up in your arms. I miss sleeping with you, Jack. But most of all, I miss your smile and your eyes when you see me. You always make me feel special. You didn't make me feel like a trophy or an idiot. You always made me feel special. Is there anything else you would like to do for me? I asked him, past tense. He nodded. Jack, can I sleep with you tonight? I begged him. No sex, I promise. I just want to feel your closeness. I woke up in the middle of the night with the sound of Jack's breathing in my ears. It calmed me down and I felt loved. His arms hugged me. One was holding my left breast, and the other was between my legs. I knew that if I did anything stupid, he wouldn't let me be that close to him anymore. I closed my eyes and fell asleep with the biggest smile on my face. This morning is very unpleasant. He woke up and began to carefully move his fingers. I squeezed it with my hand. You held my hand all night, I said. Why remove them now? Aubrey, I'm so sorry, he said. I know this is a bad idea. The only bad idea is that we didn't have sex, I said. Okay, I'll go to work soon, he said. Perhaps you can ask someone to come. I knew it was just his pain and jealousy, so I let it go. That evening, after dinner, I returned to his room. Since then, we have been sleeping together. 
I took this big step forward as a sign that things were finally going my way. Jack lived with me when our children were born. He held my hand all the time and saw a boy in front of me. After cutting the umbilical cord, the doctor came and cleaned Jack's mouth. I had to wait three days to get the result. Since my baby and I were sent home within 24 hours of the birth, I had to return to the hospital to check the results. Jack suggested we go alone since I was still very weak, but I insisted on being there. Jack surprised me, but when we got to the doctor's office, Steve was there. It looks terrible. Jack spoke to me briefly as he left the room to answer the phone. I'm only here because Jack promised to drop the charges against me, he said. I hope you are satisfied. What are you talking about, Steve? I asked. My wife and I are divorced. He almost doesn't allow me to see the children. I work as a medical technician in a factory. He lived in a basement studio. You're back with Jack. How fair is this? I asked him. Steve, Jack, and I are only together because of our children. If my son becomes yours, my life is over. I haven't had sex since he found out you were with me. I have to talk to him every night, but he doesn't like me. Everything has changed, Steve. We destroy it. As soon as the doctor sat down, Jack returned to the room. Mr. Do You, the doctor said, I have bad news for you. I expected it, Jack said. Good luck, Steve. He almost smiled as he stood up. The doctor said, you will have a lot of responsibility for the next 18 years or so. Mr. Adama, you have lost your freedom. You are the father. Jack was surprised. His chin was down and he was smiling brightly, a smile I hadn't seen on him in a long time. I jumped for joy. I almost tore the scene, but I didn't care. Jack took the time to spend time with me and the kids. I was not allowed to have sex for the first two months after the baby was born. It took a little longer than usual, but I had some problems after giving birth. Fortunately, my body quickly returned to normal. I really want to get back to being physically intimate with my husband. The day the doctor gave me the green light, I attacked him. After placing JJ on the bed, Jack sat down on the bed. I went into our room and took off my robe. I lifted the blanket and put my feet on top of Jack. He just looked at me. What are you doing? I asked him. The doctor agreed today, I said. Well, if you want to go out, I'll sit with JJ, he said. I just thought, I love you. Jack, I said through tears. It took me a while to come to my senses that night, and I think Jack knew it too. After that, he was very kind to me. Jack, it's my birthday soon, I said one morning. Have you prepared a gift for me? I'll buy you whatever you want, said Aubrey. You don't have to wait until your birthday. I said you have two options. Either I want a night where you make love to me all night like you used to, or I want three months of couples therapy. I probably should have been offended, but as we sat in the therapist's office, I had a feeling that this might help us. The goal of the first two meetings was to make us feel comfortable and safe in the office. Honestly, we're starting next week. Therapists warn us that sometimes the truth hurts, but we all need to express our feelings in order to move forward. Jack started first. He told me everything he had experienced from the day he met me to the mistakes he had made. Some things he said I never knew. It is very telling when someone says that you are the reason for everything they do. I always knew he loved me, but he made it clear how he felt about me. Then he talked about how he felt now. He told me that he always thought I was beautiful and that after our son was born, I became even more attractive. He was very honest when he talked about his desire to get pregnant again. I was so excited to hear his story that I promised to let him take me straight to the office if he wanted. So what do you do when you get home? Asked the doctor. Of course not, Jack said. Why not? Asked the doctor. We're not what we used to be, Jack said. So you don't love him anymore? The doctor asked. Jack looked out the window. Doesn't matter. You can be honest here. Perhaps we can explain why you no longer love your wife. Is it because she slept with another man or something else? Jack spoke so quietly that we could barely hear him. What is this? asked the doctor. I said I still loved her, Jack whispered, but she was no longer mine. At that moment, I could no longer hold back my tears and ran away. At home, Jack came in while I was rocking his son to sleep. I'm really sorry, he said. I guess I should be honest. Jack, it's not your honesty that hurts me, I said. I know what I did to us and especially to you, but you have to understand. Believe it or not, I'm yours. I'm yours like that child or that damn car. Why do you think I haven't had sex in over a year? I've made mistakes and I'll never make them again. Next week, it was my turn to be completely honest and tell the truth. I told them how broken and alienated I felt. When I first met Jack, I knew he was special. I told them almost everything. 
I didn't mention how many times I had sex with other men before I got caught. It doesn't make Jack happy, and since I'll never do it again, it doesn't matter. I told him about my relationship with Steve and how I realized there was only one person in my heart. I thought my story would explain how much I loved him and why what happened would never happen again. But who can understand men? When I finished, I hoped that he would understand me better, but I was wrong. My honesty was my downfall. You have lied to me all these years, he said, and you always do. In all the years of our love, I opened my heart to you and you lied to me. Thousands of lies every time you walked me to work, kissed me goodbye, told me you loved me. When we stood before God and all our friends and you swore allegiance to me, you lied. You lied to me every day until I exposed you. You looked into my eyes, you smiled at me, you lied to me. Honey, you got it all wrong, I said. You are the first and only person I have ever loved. How do I know you're not lying right now, I asked him. Then things went very badly. We don't even sleep together. Jack got up early and left before I woke up. He came home from work very late, put JJ to bed, and then went to bed himself. Last night, I took the baby from his arms, and he shook his head. You three are a perfect couple, he said. How, I asked. Being with that bastard is not good for me or your son. He will run away from us. JJ is your son, Jack. It doesn't belong to Steve. It must be him, he said. He then gave me the divorce papers and left the house. I think he's done it again since I admitted it. And looking back, I can't say I blame him. Jack was very honest with me and confirmed that he loved me more than I thought. For two years, he was devastated. He couldn't reconcile the fact that he still loved me with the fact that I was still lying to him. My honesty only brought him bad news, especially since I never really loved him until it was too late. Being with me killed him. Life without him is slowly killing me, but I really love him, so I'm letting him go. I didn't have to ask him anything during the divorce. He is very generous. But every day I die a little. I gave him joint custody and allowed him to have JJ back whenever he wanted. I hope that in time he will want to come back to me. I continued to see a therapist. I had a lot of problems to solve, but in the end he couldn't help me. All he could do was take care of Jack. I bought a really good sex toy and practice with it regularly. I also keep in touch with Brenda. He told me that Jack worked too hard and too long and that he had nothing else in life. Now he lives with our son. He didn't date anyone or anything. According to Brenda, he died slowly. I decided to do the most altruistic thing for him. I had the opportunity to meet a very nice woman. She's about my age and although she's not me, she's beautiful and innocent. No game is for her. We introduced her as our friend Brenda and she came to have lunch with her. My heart is broken by what happened that day. They say that any decent woman can attract any man she wants. Well, Erica immediately looked at Jack and Brenda was convinced that Erica loved Jack. He didn't even look at her a second time. When she goes from innocent flirting to full-blown attack, he suddenly pushes her away. He told her straight out that while he appreciated the attention, he wasn't interested. This brings us back to where we started. The people I love the most love me too. None of us can or will be happy with anyone else. I just need you to forgive me and give me another chance. So Jack, how about spending the weekend with your ex? I asked. Thanks for the offer, he said politely, but I already had plans. I'm sure, I said. Another day of the two of us alone in front of the TV, right? Aubrey, you're still young. You are beautiful. Go find someone. We are divorced. He got into his car and drove away. My sad story brought tears to my eyes. I like it. He loves me, but we just can't be together. Jacob. When I left home, I felt remorse. I love her very much, always have. And judging by the expression on her face, maybe she loves me too. The saddest thing is that none of us are happy without each other. I want to know what's the difference between us. When I'm driving on the freeway, my thoughts about emotional problems disappear before I have to focus on the traffic jam. Then I saw a red Camaro in front of me. This time without my son in the car, my heavy right leg fell. I turned the steering wheel sharply to the left, and within seconds I was next to the Camaro. The driver saw me and increased his speed. We both ran forward. The speedometer needle turned to 100, 120, 130, and the Camaro backed up. At 140 seconds I was ahead and continued to drive, leaving the Camaro in a clearly losing position in the rearview mirror. The guy turned on the light, and we turned off the road. I parked in the parking lot of a crowded restaurant. I'm too smart to meet a stranger in a less public place. When he stopped, the driver's side tinted window rolled down a little so he could see me clearly, and the door opened. Good game, I said. What did I get? As you wish, Mr. Adama. 
But she said, how about we go on a date first? I recognized her immediately. She is a tall and thin detective. Cop by day, street racer by night, right? I laughed. The girl must find a way to diffuse the tense atmosphere. She smiled. I heard that you finally divorced the crazy woman you married, he said. Perhaps we can meet here tomorrow afternoon. Okay, I said it. Why not? The next day he looked forward to the meeting with great impatience. I can't wait to hang out with someone. Anyone. After leaving work, I got into the car and headed to the restaurant. I saw her through the window as soon as she arrived. When he came in and sat down, he looked amazing. All the men in the city were looking at her. I knew I had to leave. I'm not where I need to be. I paid for his dinner, thanked him for his time, and left. Ten minutes later, I knocked on the door. As soon as he saw me through the peephole, the door opened. Hello, dear. Sorry, but he's already asleep. Want to come in and take a look? I continued to watch him sleep. He breathes the same way you do when you sleep. I grabbed her and kissed her. She didn't resist. I unbuttoned her robe and removed the bra cups from her incredible breasts. She took off her panties herself and lay down on the sofa. Before I could take off my pants, she wrapped her legs around my waist and started moaning. Our bodies merged into one, as if we were two halves of a whole, separated for too long. The funny thing is that he didn't even ask me what happened. When she finished, she continued to stand next to me as if she was afraid that I would disappear. I hugged her and covered us with a blanket. Will you stay for a while? She asked. Or was it just a short visit? I sighed. Jack, I don't care, I don't care, he said. I'm glad you're here. Then I noticed that he was crying. Aubrey, why are you crying? I asked. I'm glad you're here, he said. I'll take what I can get. Aubrey, I love you, I said. I know. You're an idiot, he said, hugging me tighter. I love you too. It may take longer, but you have to teach me how to do it, and I will always be waiting for you. Everything is fine. We can talk in the morning, I said. Do you want to spend the night with me? She asked excitedly. No, I want to spend forever with you, I said, yawning. She hugged me tighter and was silent for several minutes. Jacob, she asked, I know. This is your first night back, he said. I answered, can we start again? This time we live happily together. End. Subscribe to our channel so that the second drop does not deceive you and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you are under 18 years of age, please do not listen to the following episodes.